My name is Melos Peters and I'm a chemical engineer working in Newcastle University in the UK and my work is experimental and is focused around sensors. Now, I think you can imagine, as I said, this is experimental work. This was quite badly affected when the pandemic started. So in this video, I'm going to talk about five things that have changed uh, since COVID, so some of the challenges that we had and how we tried to overcome them. The first thing, the first obvious thing, was that the labs were shut down. So suddenly there was no access to experimental equipment and even when the lab gradually started opening up again, you just didn't have the same level of access as you had before. And that posed some challenges because most of the work that we do is quite multidisciplinary so you need access to lots of different things and in order to time that, that became very complicated. And that's why we saw that collaborations became even more important than before. Because even if we wouldn't have access to a piece of kit, for instance, one of our collaborators would have. And I would like to f stress that this doesn't only include academic collaborations, but this also includes working with industry, which were open for much longer than most academic labs were, and also clinical work, because hospitals did keep them running. So what we did is we strengthened our links with these industrial partners and also with the hospitals in order to push our work along. The second thing that follows on from that is that the time in the lab became really precious. So you really had to maximize all the time of the experiments that you've had. So that led to a real drive to automate experiments, to for instance start implementing some software for the modeling, but also it gave an opportunity for new skills. And in our case, we started moving towards 3D printing, which is something that we never done before, but is quite easily done at home. So you can make the design, which probably takes the most of the time, and when you print it, you just press the button and it should go. So <clears throat> this really became vital for the later part of our research, where we started to look more towards practical applications and in order to make prototypes that we could showcase towards industry. And the third thing, which also directly follows on from having less access to certain pieces of equipment, and particularly in other faculties, such as in the medical school, is to focus more on portable sensors. You will see there's a real drive in the market anyway to go towards smaller sensors, sensors that you can use at home, uh, and also sensors that you can use for continuous monitoring. Now, by making uh, these portable sensors, most of the equipment that we had was within the lab ourselves. So we use relatively um, lower cost equipment, which is probably more suitable towards screening, but could have more impact because we can really see a shift in the market towards having sensors that can screen for conditions first and then having more expensive tests to really identify what's going on. The fourth thing is a real shift towards homeworking and being more flexible with time. So I would say that our working pattern has completely changed, at least in the university. We're slowly getting back towards giving more lectures, but there's still a considerable amount of time that we can work from home. And this doesn't just apply to academics, but it also applies to PhD students and postdocs. And I think we've seen that if you have a space at home where you can work, so if you have some kind of office set up, that working from home sometimes can be very effective for, for instance, analysis of data, or if you need some dedicated time for write-up. So I think it learned us how to manage our time more effectively, but on the other hand, it can also be quite tricky to motivate yourself from home. And then it can be good to come in an environment in a lab where you interact with other people and you can throw other ideas around. But it's definitely led to a more balanced week where you have a mixture between home working and working on campus. And the fifth and the final point is making the most out of the online networking opportunities. Before the pandemic, I used to travel a lot. I can see that slowly this is kicking in again and I am going to some international conferences again this summer. However, what I did learn and I think most of the people is to kind of be more careful about the selection uh, from a sustainability perspective, but also from a time perspective from the conferences you are doing and also to make the most out of the online networking opportunities. I think online conferences are not for everyone. It can be much harder sometimes to make new connections, but they do make it more accessible to certain people. So suddenly I could access a lot of conferences in different continents I never would have been able to go to. So it definitely enabled me to do more talks than I normally would have done and perhaps reaching a bigger audience. And this doesn't just apply to online conferences, 
Also, we had these outreach grants. So for instance, for the Royal Academy of Engineering, where we moved online, so to this medium, to YouTube. And we could see that we could really increase the global reach of the work we're doing. So that was definitely an exciting opportunity. So overall, if you work in research, particularly in experimental research, you will see that there have been big changes in the work that we've had since COVID. Some presented new opportunities, but for a lot of people, this has been particularly challenging. What we'll see in, in, in the area of sensors, I think we'll, we'll work more towards portable systems. And we hope that in the future, that some of the, the sensors that we've got in our lab, that we can work with industry to bring them towards the market. If you want to know more about uh, some of our topical research or some of the sensors that we use, for instance, uh, for detection of COVID-19, then please have a look at this playlist.